Well, and I think uh, to be humble means to acknowledge that at this point in time, Michael Brown is wrong about something. Today, as I sit here today, there is something that I believe to be true. There is a conviction that I hold. There is an opinion that I promote that is wrong. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Three Words, a bite-sized podcast about the strategic and significant choices that you can make in order to become the very best version of yourself. My name is Dr. Michael Brown. I am the host of this Three Words podcast, and I'm here today with my dear friend, common guest here at Three Words, to have a very honest, raw dare say, provocative conversation that is probably unlike any other episode that we've ever engaged in. And I would rather have this with no one else than Amy Seifert, mom, wife, best-selling author, life coach, dear, dear friend of 20 years. And I think it's Amy because we've known each other for 20 years that I feel like we can have this conversation around these three words. Find common ground. If there is ever a time in the history of our country, if there's ever a time in the history of our world, at least in our lifetime, Amy, when this needs to be not only a podcast, but a trumpet call to our communities, to our families, to our country, it is this, to find seek out, pursue common ground. What are your thoughts as we start this conversation? Oh, I'm with you. This is, we are in such a polarized situation right now across the board. I mean, the pandemic has Mm -hmm. made, has brought so many things to, to have one side or the other. Yep. Um, and I think when we start to think about how do we do this, how do we find common ground with people that we really disagree with, or even inside our own home? Like I've run into this with my, in my marriage during the pandemic. Okay. Um, and so trying to figure out, well, how do we get to, how, how do we get to the a base that we can agree on? The three questions we can be asking is what is valuable, what is good and what is true? Hmm. And where can we, even thinking about this for me with my husband, Rob, can we, can we, can we talk about a value that really matters right now and then go from there? So, so for instance, during the pandemic, um, we have had many disagreements about how we ought to be friends and find community and connection because this has just been so hard and isolating. Yeah. I am way more social than my husband. And so he's, <laughs> he's good with having less anyways, just in life, but I'm like dying. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I would love to be taking more walks. I would love to have people in our home master, you know, like, can we figure some of this out? And he's been like on the other side, like outside only let's do the, and, and just butting yeah. heads yeah. so hard and challenging. And then we've got to make these decisions for our three kids. Of course. What can they do? What sport? Not what's happening. Like, Teresa has said the same thing to me. She has said, I, I don't like what the pandemic has done to our marriage yes. because we have to navigate. We think very differently, but the common value for you and Rob and for Teresa and I would probably be what? Connection. Connection. And that's why I said, I'm like, yeah. please agree with me that we need connection. Like you need to say that, like make that come out of your mouth right now. You know? yeah. And yes. And so we could, we could look at that common value on the table and then build up from there. But to start, like, what's this common foundation that we can start building from? And and then and then, and then make decisions thereafter. But yeah. finding that common ground, yeah, that that foundational that helps us know how to move forward together, probably yes. with more empathy, yeah, with more kindness, with more understanding, and dare say, with more appreciation. Um, yeah. And I think what's happening in our families during the pandemic, what's happening in our country during, if I can use the word chaos, Uh is we want 
we can see all the differences. Right. <laughs> yes. We can, we can find all the uncommon ground. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the common ground is so, so hard to find. So the first question was, what are those common values that we share? Find those. And then secondly, what is good? What is good? So I'm guessing for all of us that there are things that we believe deeply to be good uh, and things within our hearts that we think are bad. Well, as we're in these conversations, as we're in these communities, as we're interacting with the world, let's let's major on the things that we feel like. Where are those places? What what is something that you feel is good? Yeah. That I also feel is good. And yeah. then together we can celebrate that. Let's really seek that out. This is the work right now. I think mm. this is the real work and it's hard work. It's easy to villainize mm. others. Like I've done it in my marriage. Like you are not on my team right now. And he's like, hold up. (laughs) This is team cipher. Like we're together. We're going to figure this out. And I want to do that with others who disagree with me. Villainize. But if, if I think what is good is, is kindness and dignity for others and honoring who they are apart from our differences, that has to play out in these conversations. Yes. And you said it best. It is easier to villainize. It is hard strenuous, heart-wrenching work Mm -hmm. to find common ground because we're going to have to be humble. We're going to have to give. We're going to have to nod and say, you know what? You're right. Um, Or I agree with you on that. Imagine, so for instance, last evening, I was sitting with a a dear friend, uh, not sitting with, because obviously during COVID, we are having this conversation on the phone and we were actually exploring. We called each other with the intention of exploring the areas where we disagree. That was the goal. The goal of the conversation was because we are such good friends, but we could kind of feel it that there were these differences and we kind of were avoiding it and not really going there and say, let's have the conversation. What are some things we disagree on? And we, because we know each other's hearts, because we value relationship Mm -hmm. over rightness, because we really desire to be connected, we engage in that conversation. We actually toyed with the idea of having that conversation on a podcast right? right. and realized we're not sure we want to. And the reason is because it's cheap. Mm. Um, That in many ways, and this is what my friend said, he says, people need to earn the right to sit at that table and to have that conversation, particularly during a time, if we did something digitally and you take this snippet and you throw it out here on, and you take this snippet, there'd be more misunderstanding. But I thought we're going to have this conversation post-COVID when we're all vaccinated, right? And we can actually sit together uh, at one of our restaurants, have a conversation with close friends and family and actually talk about the disagreements. We're excited about that, Mm -hmm. but we're only excited about it because we have committed to relationship first. I mean, you said this earlier, Amy, uh, even off camera, this notion that, and let's explore this a little bit together, is that finding common ground is essential to every relationship. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) There are no relationships. There are no friendships apart from having shared values, a shared understanding of what is good. But, But then also there's a third question what is true. Right. That's tricky. It is. We now are working within a society, within a culture where people are claiming different facts. Right. Right. How do we navigate that? Right. (laughs) Tell us. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's just hard. (laughs) But what I think we can do in the midst of that, and again, this is where the fight comes in, the fight for good and the fight for relationship, is we can actually say to each other, what are some facts what are things that are true that we can, we can agree, agree on? on. Yeah. yeah. Because even having two or three or four or five of those kind of in the mix right. will allow us to feel more comfortable mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. think safer and more connected to be able to have those conversations that maybe we're like, I think what you think is true is not true. And what I, th- you know, and to be able to have some of those harder conversations, but what's happening is you said it, we polarize. Now I'm mm-hmm. only going to spend time talking to people who think exactly like I do. I'm only going to listen to media outlets that, that, that say exactly what I believe. I'm only going to go to read articles and listen to podcasts that only reinforce my echo chamber. 
Ooh, the echo chamber. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which we don't grow in nope. echo chambers. We become, if I can say this out loud, more angry. Oh, yeah. More mean. Uh-huh. More arrogant. More prideful. And dare say, the worst version of ourselves. It's not great. I don't want to be that person. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be that person. And I feel so passionately about things, as do you. We're passionate human beings. Right. <laughs> Amy Seifer and Michael Brown, we're passionate <laughs> human beings. And we want to be able to, in fact, my dear friend, Dr. Tyler Swans, who's a life coach with us, says it this way. He says, I want to um, speak in such a way that I believe I'm right, but listen in such a way that I might be wrong. That's good. Uh, it was so good when yeah. he says it. I, in fact, I was, you know, asking him to repeat that to me recently right, right. because that's that's what passionate people do. Right? Which I think one of the tenets in doing this well is to be humble. Hmm. We need humility. Yeah, we're we're missing it in in our culture right now. Um, and the only, I mean, it's got to start with me. Yeah, and you. Well, and I think uh, to be humble means to acknowledge. That at this point in time, Michael Brown is wrong about something. Today, as I sit here today, there is something that I believe to be true. There is a conviction that I hold. There is an opinion that I promote that is wrong. (laughs) This is so freeing to say that. And there may be more than one thing. There's probably several things. But see, what happens is all of these conversations, just going into a conversation presuming that I am surely wrong about something. Right. But what's happening is the walls are up Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're like, I I mean, how prideful of me to think that even though I've read and I'm studying and I'm thinking deeply about these things, I'm one of 8 billion people on the planet. I'm I'm living in this very small snapshot of time in human history and though, but I have all the answers. (laughs) Like what (laughs) What? is that? (laughs) So I think I love that. That humility means to simply say, you know what? There is something that I'm wrong about right now, if not numerous things. And I may not know what they are. And if I thought I knew it was wrong, I would obviously change them. Right. But let's just acknowledge that every person that's talking, everyone who is posting something on social media, let's just all acknowledge we're wrong about something. We could totally be wrong. Humble. Be humble, which allows us then to stay curious. Hmm. Right? And not cemented into whatever our opinions are. But if you're humble, then you can stay curious and you can say, Tell me more about that. Yeah. Let me explore. I'm not going to be afraid to ask questions because I think that can, that can be even for me as a woman or wherever you are in your religious journey, like sometimes questions aren't welcome. That's mm -hmm. not helpful. We not, we need to be able to be curious and ask questions and to explore and not think, well, this is my belief system and I'm here, I'm I'm behind, I'm stuck, I'm here. You know, it's funny, this way my brain works, you know, I think in terms of acrostics and alliteration and even alphabets, right? We were (laughs) talking about this recently, but the thought that came to mind is to find common ground, I want to affirm you and your perspective Mm -hmm. in the places where I can. Mm -hmm. B, I want to believe the best. Yeah. I want to believe the best. I never want to assume the worst. I want to believe the best in you. Yeah. So of the millions of people who maybe voted differently than you did in the presidential election, Half, I want to believe right? the best. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. thirdly, I want to be curious. So yes. that's my ABCs. We just kind of come I love with that. it. But I want to affirm. I want to, I want to affirm where we agree. I want to find that place. I want to believe the best in yeah, you. And I want to be curious. Yeah. I want to be curious. Tell me more. Help me understand. Yes. Help me understand. And when I ask that question, help me understand. The question is not so I can build a stronger case against what you believe. Right. But I want to be able to understand. Yeah. And I want to be able to see you, my perspective and your perspective. I want to see my humanity and your humanity. Yeah. I want to be able to, I mean, again, we have to, Amy. Yeah. I mean, look around the world and all this even happened in the last couple of months. Like if we don't figure this out, right. our country it's, will cease to exist. Yeah, like we will explode. be two countries or three countries yeah. or like why we've got to be able to say, what are those finding those common ground? What are those places where we can agree, but there's such polarization. And, and I think you said it right. And I want to say it again. It begins with me. 
It, I keep thinking like, as opposed to, I hope the world gets, gets their act together and figures need to it. figure this out. No, like in my home, I need to do this with my 13 year old. Mm. I need to raise someone who sees his mom modeling. Tell me more about why this is so like, we're so passionate about this. Like I have no idea why, but I'm going to sit <laughs> here and, and listen and step into your 13 year old shoes. If we got to practice getting into each other's shoes, seeing the perspective they see, learning, listening, you know, like this is, this is part of getting ourselves out of this. You know, and maybe part of it is too, is allowing ourselves to react while moving forward. It's interesting as I spend time talking with folks, there are times where if someone like we're having a conversation or I'll, I'll say something, <gasps> You can watch it almost like there's a wall going up to say, okay, I can react. I can be like, but even maybe say that out loud. Maybe that's part of finding common ground is Mm -hmm. saying out loud, what you just said freaks me out. Yeah. How you voted in this election, it blows me away. Yeah. The thing you posted on social media, it just creates tremendous confusion, but I'm not going to withdraw from you. I'm going to move toward you. And I wanted to say that out loud. Like, I don't understand. I don't agree. I find this hard, but I love you. Yeah. We're going to disagree in love. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to dialogue in kindness. Yes. And we're going to figure this thing out. And I think the way to figure it out is to be willing not to figure it out, but actually find common ground. So the fact that I can walk away from a conversation And I guess that's what I want to leave, even if I may, as we wrap up this conversation today, a challenge, a big challenge, a hard challenge. There's probably a relationship right now for those who are listening and are viewing us, maybe even our our YouTube channel. There's a relationship right now that is strained because of some issue that isn't personal, but might be political. It might be a social justice issue. It might be a belief system, a paradigm of difference and perspectives. I want you to prioritize that relationship over being right. I want you to make a phone call today. Amy and I challenge every listener to maybe send that text today and say, hey, I'm going to move towards you to repair that relationship, to improve that relationship to really commit to having some hard conversations and to do so in love and kindness and curiosity and believing the best and affirming you as a human being who shares similar core values to me, who believes what is good. There's things that we share and there's truth that we share and that you would move toward that person today, at least initiate, hey, we need to talk. And begin to, as hard as it is, because your community depends on it, your family and relationships depend on it, the country needs it to find common ground. For life coaching, consulting services, or to hire a keynote speaker, please visit dmbcoaching.com.